Okay, people, you ready? I'm gonna pick, I'll pick up the truck at 12.30 and then I'll probably be there around uh, 1.15, 1.10. Okay, and you'll have somebody there? Perfect, thanks so much, bye. All right, guys, um, we're getting a U-Haul truck and we're gonna go pick something up. Let's go. Okay, so I know most of you by now, those who watched the um, last video in the CB7 build saga, you already know that I'm getting a motor, but you don't know which one. So it'll be cool, I, th I have an idea. Pause the video now and uh, go ahead and state your guess as to what motor I'm gonna be picking up. Um, the letter and the uh, two numbers after for the, the displacement and um, the letter after that. Obviously, um, it could have some numbers after that if it's a USDM motor pending so just be as specific as possible is what I'm trying to say and I'd love to see what you guys think based on my last video uh, what you think I'm gonna pick up it's pretty nice so let's go I was just thinking while I was doing this drive um, Everybody who gets to modify cars or have a car that they get to build as a race car or modify or a show car, we're pretty darn fortunate. Um, it might not be luck, it might be luck. A lot of us work hard, I don't wanna downplay that, but we are very fortunate to be able to do what we do and enjoy and have this kind of a hobby. Um, so don't forget to be grateful for what you have. Even if things are going wrong, um, just even have gratitude that you get to have those problems because uh, there's some people who couldn't even dream to do the kind of stuff that we do to cars. So just don't forget that. The motor is somewhere in this shipping dock. Yo, there it is. Perfect. I bet you wanna know. What is inside? Okay, time to slice in and see what's inside. Okay, people, you ready? Oh yeah, baby! H23 Blue Top from Japan. Let's get going. Yes, there it is. H23A GDM from H Motors Online. Represent right there. So this is a 95 millimeter stroke, 87 millimeter bore. The head is actually an H22 head and um, the block is that H23. So it's JDM, so it's got no number afterwards, just H23A. And it looks like some parts of it look brand new. What a beautiful motor. So it's the exact same Intec manifold I had earlier. It's got some it's got a totally different IACV. It's missing the IAB black box, which is unfortunate, the black box. I would have loved to have those IABs going, but I'm gonna have an idea for that. But yeah, this is just awesome. I'm so stoked on it. All right, so I got it on the pallet in my car tent, and now I'm going to attach it uh, to the bracket so I can put it on the engine stand, and then we'll hoist it up to put it on the engine stand, and then we'll go to work. Let me show you guys where I hooked this up um, so that you can know how to um, get an H off the ground um, without damaging anything. So one chain goes through the alternator bracket. Uh, it's got two parts, a lower part and an upper part, and you send it through there and you connect it and you tighten that chain up that way. And on the other side, the intake manifold. Underneath the intake manifold, there is an intake manifold um, bracket to kind of hold some of the weight of the thing. You can see it down there. Um, you send your chain above that, but below the runners, and uh, that'll hold this side really nice. And so now it's ready to go up.
Okay, it's on there, but I want to point something out that I really blew it on. It's hard to tell on the camera, but this is not level. And you never want to mount something this heavy on not level ground. Look at these two wheels. They're not the same height. Neither are the other two. And you can see what tried to level itself with digging that much into the ground. So, um, try and do this on a more level surface than I did to avoid the engine falling over. So, here's the tasks. Lots of them before this goes in. I am going to be taking off this engine harness. I don't need it. And I'm actually going to sell the whole thing. It has the full connector to the ECU, but it, um, and it doesn't have the cord that connects to the, um, air intake temperature sensor. Um, I'm also going to be, uh, redoing timing belt. Uh, I'm going to remove the balance shaft belt, not the balance shafts, but the belt, the water pump and, uh, the tensioner. I'm going to do a manual tensioner conversion. Um, got to remove this harmonic balancer. Unfortunately, it got cracked right there. It's no longer balanced, um, but I'm going to be replacing it with an ATI super damper anyway. Um, I've heard wonderful things about how light they are. Uh, I'm going to be um, doing a once over on the fuel. JDM motors have the fuel inlet on this side, and uh, I'm going to be using my AEM fuel rail from the other car. And this is a P13 runner, so I can put it right on there, and it will have the inlet for the fuel on the other side over here. Um, I'm also going to be taking off the plenum from the uh, intake manifold. I'm not going to be using the IABs, the black box is not with this set. That will be uh, replaced with a black tracks spacer, which is just basically an empty hole, so it reduces runner size. And um, a couple other things, the little bracket that goes on this side um, to connect this motor to my uh, motor mount will have to be sought after in the junkyard because this motor will sit pretty cattywampus in here with the bracket that's in there and uh the intake i'm sorry exhaust manifold that'll be coming off too because that'll be replaced with plm try y header for the h series oil pan will be replaced with um a moroso baffled oil plan with trap doors and um the distributor the distributor on this side this will be uh, replaced with a TD61U distributor, which came in all the H preludes. Um, this one is for an OBD2 system, and that's not what I have. So this will be for sale also. So some of you are wondering what I'm going to do with the old motor. Uh, now it's not going to go back in the car. Well, I'm going to sell the viable parts of it. So starting off, we've got the bare block here. Um, uh, it's got ARP studs in it. It's got the water pump line. It's got the oil pressure sensor and uh it's got the stock rod bolts which i wouldn't reuse it is a bare block and um i have the remain seal guard also that i can throw in there also we've got this distributor right here i'm going to be selling that that's the stock f22a distributor it worked really well and then the head my built head i'm going to be selling that um so you'll need a gasket for the valve cover it goes right there it's got an aem cam gear it's got the busy level two regrind and it's got uh, new valves and it's got new valve guides, They're only a couple thousand miles old. And there's the power steering uh, bolts right there. Um, so all you really need to get this going besides that valve cover gasket is a new OEM gasket. And you need uh, to do a valve adjustment once it's on the block uh, that you put it on. And so, um, yeah, I'm selling all this stuff. Uh, if you want to, um, inquire after this i've got an instagram so hit me up on that same exact name as the youtube channel name and direct message me and we'll talk about pricing and shipping all right guys here we are pick and pull moss landing yeah been Let's here go. since 12 o'clock it's now like 4 30. af that is back there he's taking off the back all of the brackets in the back he's yeah. gonna get all of it out all of it he's gonna to take all the disc this. brakes right out i'm right here trying to get this windage tray out and if anyone ever tells you that getting this thing right here this is easy they are so wrong well that was a long and fun filled day at the junkyard but definitely fruitful so this is kind of what you need if you want to do the uh rear disc swap you need to go find an ex or a SE model that had the uh, rear disc brakes. 
you need to grab the whole um, e-brake cable all the way inside the car and detach it from inside the car and uh, you need to grab as much as the brake line up to the end of the rubber hose as you can um, and uh, I just took the control arms I don't want to unbolt them but hopefully my FFC control arms which look real nice will um, swap over onto this one of the worst parts of course is undoing the um, separate that baldwin up there which can be a pain he's actually on the easier side than some of the front ones so there it is so next we're gonna put them on And disc brakes in the rear. Oh yes, these stock rotors aren't too bad. Uh, first of all, replace the pads at least, but that's pretty good for sitting for forever. Um, yeah, so uh, the last step was of course to adjust the e-brake cable. And uh, first I wanna show you that the un up lower control arms in the rear do work from Fat4 Customs, so I was able to swap those directly over. The tricky part was getting the upper control arm above the progress rear sway and then putting the e-brake cable where it belongs everything else was a pretty straightforward swap over including as you saw my um, braided brake lines um, there's another uh, particular braided line I have to get because uh, there were two soft lines on the uh, disc brake setup but for now I'm pretty happy um, I will say that you need to pull when it comes to the e-brake cables um, when you put them into the chassis at that point you need to pull as much out as you can first and adjust them that way so that there isn't too much going into the uh, the uh, cockpit area and so um, adjusting that was a little tricky because I had too much shoved in there but I will show you they're not my cables weren't exactly the same length but of course this little swiveling piece that the cable heads attached to uh, accounts for that um, my adjustment uh, was quite far out actually but yeah I'm really happy can't wait to test them out but there's a lot more to do before that can happen so I'm coming over here to the motor here's some things I have to do still I have to pull off the wire harness from here to take off the plenum from the intake manifold take off the parts I don't need get ready to do timing spark plugs spark work wires things like that so let's get to that so I just looked a little closer and the head is stamped PCB you can see that upside down now that's cool and all but the idle air control valve is completely different than the OBD1 control valves with a completely different plug. So that kind of sucks. I won't be able to use this plenum at all. But I had to stop working. It's getting pretty late. But um, we're gonna just uh, next video. We're just gonna keep on going, work on that motor. I'm also gonna um, convert the uh, power steering rack to a manual rack. I'll go through that with you, and we'll just keep checking along here. We're gonna get that car ready to go for the racing season. Uh, so thanks for watching this video. For now, this is Falconator signing out.